Hello everybody, welcome to this edition of Innovise's Water Drops. My name is Midori Patterson and I'm a solutions engineer here on the Innovise team. And today we're going to be talking about info drainage and Civil 3D and how a new feature within Info Drainage 2023.3 can help streamline drainage design workflows with extended property data sets. This workflow demonstration is for any existing Info Drainage users who are just looking to see what's new in Info Drainage 2023.3, but it's also for land developers, site engineers, and drainage designers looking to eliminate any form of manual data entry from their drainage design workflows. So once you have your finished drainage design within Info Drainage, how can we bring that back to Civil 3D with as much information as possible to help assist in costing, class detections, uh, any sort of additional infrastructure design, or of course construction drawings, all of those things that you need to get your drainage design into Civil 3D to do. Uh, so the workflow that we'll be going over, first we're just gonna start with a basic Civil 3D pipe network and bring it to InfoDrainage. Uh, then we're gonna perform a quick hydraulic analysis in InfoDrainage, verify and update our drainage design there. And then we're going to bring that info drainage network back to the Civil 3D pipe network, update it with our info drainage information, and then take a look at what kind of data is brought over and view those extended property data sets. Uh, and then we'll send it back again to info drainage just to demonstrate the flexibility of info drainage and how it can support multiple round trips. So let's take a look at an example pipe network within Civil 3D. As you can see, I have this pipe network in here representing just a pretty simple storm drain network in a residential area. There's some catch basins, we have some manholes, we have a pipe network as well. So here we have a 24 inch pipe that's kind of just running through the middle of our residential area here. This also has been drawn in profile view so we can see that 24 inch pipe at a 1% slope in here and so kind of a common workflow with civil 3d and info drainage would be initially laying out your drainage design in civil 3d making use of the tools that are here to help you build that and then sending it to info drainage where you can actually do your detailed hydraulic analysis to optimize those sizes design retention ponds in that sort of exercise that you would use a hydraulic model for. So with the ultimate version of Info Drainage, there is this option to export to Info Drainage directly within Civil 3D. So here we'll step through this export wizard, just going to give a name for our Info Drainage file. We'll be prompted to ask what we want to do with the surface. I'll load the surface in later or just choose not to export it with this uh, in this step here and then there's a parts mapping process where it'll read the civil 3d parts family and parts that are within our current pipe network and then we'll just assign what pipe sizes these are going to be and this can be saved to a configuration file so that you don't have to do it manually uh, in further exports but we'll just do that and then we will move to info drainage and take a look at what was exported. So now we'll open that info drainage file that we just created. And we can see that those pipes and manholes have been sent to info drainage with their sizes and connectivity being maintained. So this is that 24 inch pipe that we were looking at earlier. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to change the exit loss coefficient of this particular pipe. And I'm going to make a couple other just kind of arbitrary changes in here. I'm going to change this manhole from a rectangular manhole to a circular manhole for whatever reason. We've decided this doesn't need to be a catch basin anymore and this is actually just going to be an access manhole. Um, we'll apply those changes and then we'll go ahead and validate the model. We're seeing some issues here. One thing to note is that bringing uh, we are bringing in an info drainage model back to Civil 3D. The program will not allow you to bring it in if it is not a valid model. Basically, just doesn't want to make sure. We just want to make sure that you're not bringing in something that's not going to work or something that hasn't 
isn't correct hydraulically. One of the validation errors we were seeing is that there is no flow defined. So you can enter in flow into the system in a few ways. For this example, we're going to go ahead and add a catchment area and apply rainfall to this catchment area so that it can enter our pipe network. I'll just draw in kind of a dummy catchment area here. Again, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to reconnect this inflow to this main pipe branch that we're going to be taking a look at. And so let's validate it. Let's see what else we need to do. This inlet that had been created when the catchment area was drawn, we don't need that anymore. So I'll accept that change. Going back here, I have no rainfall criteria selected. So let's go ahead and take a look at our rainfall manager. We have a couple design storm type distributions loaded within here already. I'm going to load in a rainfall file that I have saved. So you can save these files, use them across different projects. And now let's see. So I have that rainfall loaded, still haven't just selected it within our analysis criteria. So I can apply that rainfall now. And now we should be good to go. So I'm just going to run this really quickly. You can see this pipe popped up red. This means that this is surcharging. So let's just go ahead and upsize this pipe. I'm not going to go through a full drainage analysis here. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about sizing these pipes, including our network design wizard, which size that, sizes that pipe for us. But I'm just going to go ahead and upsize it to a 48 inch pipe for the sake of timeliness in this demonstration. So I've saved this file. We're now ready to bring it back to Civil 3D. So now we're back within Civil 3D. We want to update our pipe network with the changes that we just made within Info Drainage. And so we'll import from Info Drainage, again, utilizing the ribbon within Civil 3D. Select our Info Drainage file. We're going to keep the existing Civil 3D surface that we have in our Civil 3D file. And again, here's that parts mapping process. We're just reassigning the different pieces that are within info drainage to the corresponding civil 3D parts family. So I do have a configuration file saved already. So this will automatically populate everything for us. I'll we'll press finish and then we'll see how those changes were applied to our network and also look at the extended property data sets feature. So now let's take a look at our updated pipe network. If we zoom into this once 24 inch pipe, we can see that it's been updated to our 48 inch pipe as we specified within info drainage. Also within this pipe, we can take a look at the extended data sets. So this is what's new within 2023.3. These extended data sets have been carried over from info drainage to civil 3D. So now you have all this information. We have our entry loss, exit loss, uh, Manning's value, so that these sorts of things can be used, whether that be for just labeling, for just adding further design detail to your construction drawings, uh, or for things like costing. Within this manhole that we updated, you can also see it's no longer our catch basin, it's just the manhole. Similarly, the extended data has been updated here so we can see that access is required. This is now a sealed manhole. And because this pipe network has been updated and not replaced, you'll see these changes reflected within any references that are already in your Civil 3D drawing. So here we can see that our labels have been updated. This is indeed a 48 inch pipe now, just so we don't have to manually re-enter anything, manually correct any broken references. These are still going to be any references that were set up with these networks previously, like our reference surface. That's all maintained so that we don't have to spend any time kind of again, manually doing those sorts of changes. Similarly, our catchment area that we designated within Info Drainage has been brought over as a Civil 3D catchment type. And again, in that extensive data, you can see the different hydrologic parameters that we had established within Info Drainage. Those have been brought over as well as these other more standard hydrologic parameters such as runoff coefficient and time of concentration. Now let's say this drainage design needs to change. For example, let's say the proposed design now calls for a more commercial land use type up here. So this catchment area, the runoff coefficient is going to need to change to something a little more impervious. 
Um, let's also say that this manhole, actually let's look at this manhole. Let's say that we've decided that this actually is going to need access. Additionally, this catch basin can't be on this side of the street anymore. We're going to have to do some regrading and move it over to this side of the street. And for whatever reason, we decide that this pipe, this is going to need to change as well. No longer is it going to be a 24 inch pipe, but we're going to actually swap it out for a 36 inch pipe. So any sort of site design, any sort of design project in general is going to have some sort of unforeseen changes, some sort of design iterations. And so we need this to be flexible so that we can send it back to info drainage. And again, just make sure that everything is going to work out hydraulically based on any sort of changes that might have happened since we last brought it in from info drainage. So we'll just step through this process again. Uh, I don't have a configuration file saved for this export. We need to assign that new 36 inch pipe size, assign our manhole sizes and finish. And then we'll look at the info drainage file once more. So now we've opened that info drainage file once again, and we can see in the catchment area here, our runoff coefficient has been updated to that more impervious value. We can see that the structure has been moved over within this property data set. We can see that access is required in this manhole as we designated within Civil 3D and so on and so forth. We have our 36 inch pipe over here. So all this just to say that, of course, within any sort of site development project, things are changing, different pieces are moving, and you need to be able to move between these two products seamlessly. And so the interoperability between Info Drainage and Civil 3D allows you to do so with minimal data loss and minimal manual data entry. And I'll also point out that the rainfall data file that we had loaded is maintained. So we're not starting from a blank info drainage drawing and we can still make use of anything that we have set up before. And so that concludes this demonstration of a round trip between info drainage to Civil 3D and back to info drainage and how we can eliminate manual data entry from the drainage design process with the new feature of info drainage 2023.3 that allows us to access and update these extended property data sets. Any form of eliminating manual data entry enables us as drainage designers to streamline our workflows and keep our hydraulic models and construction documents in sync.